Revolutions, Orbis. It's time to conquer one of the greatest animation techniques and how to harness this skill to create amazing work in After Effects. As always, we'll go through multiple examples how this effect can be created, giving you the power to debunk those flat earth enthusiasts. All right, before we break down the larger scenes in this one, we need to start off with the basics and create what would seem like a simple animation. However, as you'll see, there's a handful of top secret techniques we'll be going through to pull this off, and I can't tell you where my dealer gets them from. Okay, let's start off by drawing out your central object. You know, this could be anything like a logo or a simple shape. For this, I'm working with a circle with a white stroke width of five. Next, when your central object is ready to go, you need a revolving object. So real fast, we can duplicate this shape, for example, scale it down, move it over to the side, and be sure to center its anchor point. Now, creating revolutions is easy, so add a null object to your stack, make all your layers 3D except for a background if you have them, then go into the null's Y rotation, alt click the stopwatch. And I typically use time, asterisk 200, but you know, it can be any value that you want. Lastly, parent your revolving object to the null. Typically, I would say nice, but you know, this shape is not facing us. So to fix this, one of those top secret techniques is to select the layer, then go to layer, transform, auto orient, then select orient towards camera. Now this looks nice, but we can design this even further, like showing the orbital path. To do this, you know, create a circle with only the stroke enabled, make sure the circle is centered inside the composition and that it touches the center of the rotating object as well. And of course, center that anchor point as well. Then make this orbiting ring a 3D layer, rotate its X rotation by 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and now you can't see it. However, another top secret trick is to create another null object. Make it 3D and parent the orbital path and the previous null object to the new null object. Then you can animate any of the rotation values to further the revolutions, baby. It's coming together, but it's bland like my attempt to write subtle jokes. First, you may notice that the orbiting line is popping out in front of the circle. I don't like that, but we can set the track mat of the path to the revolving object and click invert. Then turn the layer back on, boom, no problem. Now we can easily expand on your design. For example, you can duplicate the path, rotate it, and even go into the stroke settings. Hit this plus icon to turn it into dashes. And you can even hit the plus icon again to add the gap parameter. You know, if that's not top secret, I don't know what is, but you can animate the Z rotation of the path to make it move. It look, I mean, it doesn't look like it, but it's moving, but feel free to expand and have fun with your design. And if you like, you can create an adjustment layer, add the noise effect and the glow effect to it. We'll set the noise to 12% and then set the glow radius to over 100. And as a bonus, you can use posterize time. And perfect, now we have the basics out of the way and we can jump into more advanced designs. But first, before we move on to our next technique, be sure to pick up our free motion duck templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. And if you find yourself needing to save precious time on all your projects, we have over 35,000 templates to help you produce amazing work with the link below. All right, this next orbiting scene is all about working with lighting and turning any image into a 3D object. To get started, make sure your 3D renderer is set to Cinema 4D in your composition settings. And when ready, apply the CC sphere effect to a white solid layer. And this will give you a technically and also not technically a 3D sphere. You know, 2.5D I think is the correct definition. I really just want to use this effect for the built-in lighting parameters. For example, in the light drop-down tab, we can adjust the light intensity, the height, and even the direction to help shape the light. In the shading tab, there's a handful of great settings to look at, but I'll lower the ambient. And just by changing a few settings, you can have a relatively nice sphere. And by adding an orbiting null, you can duplicate, scale down, and reposition your sphere and make those spheres 3D. Then parent the sphere to the null. From here, be sure to select your spheres and set them to orient towards camera. Then you may need to set the Y rotation of the rotating sphere to 90 degrees. And now you have orbiting spheres 
But based on the parameters of this project, this gives us an opportunity to cast shadows onto a floor if we had one. For the floor, we'll create a solid that is 4000 by 4000, then apply the radio waves effect. Make the layer 3D, rotate it by 90 degrees, and position it underneath the spheres. From here, I would create a camera and use the camera tools to angle downward onto your scene. Beautiful. Kind of. The radio waves are not looking good. So for the settings, I'm just going to adjust the frequency and the lifespan. Oh, and of course, the color. Now we can create a point light. Make sure cast shadows are on and you can increase the shadow diffusion. Make sure cast shadows are also enabled for your sphere layers inside of material options. And as you can see, the light emits a shadow on the floor. Feel free to move the light if you want to. Now, since we're using the CC sphere effect, you can create any spherical design. For example, you can essentially get your hands on a planet map and apply the CC sphere effect, and that's it. You're ready to work on the Ancient Alien series for the History Channel. But you can create your own designs in a separate composition. For example, real fast, I created a series of lines across the comp. Then back in the main comp, we'll select our CC sphere layer and we'll replace that current design by holding Alt on our keyboard and dragging that new composition over. This will replace the current sphere for the new design, so, you know, that's pretty chill. If you want to be able to create this last scene, please be sure to watch my other tutorial on creating objects with reactive lighting and real physics linked below. So subscribe if you want to be the best, and always be creating.